Hi, I'm Rick Hofling. At United Airlines, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect their lives and their communities. That's why we're proud to support the Make a Difference programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, JFK Medical Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Kessler Foundation, changing the lives of people with disabilities. United Airlines, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department. And by ADP, a comprehensive provider of human resources technology and services. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, small news, big news, true Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It's my honor, my pleasure to introduce two very distinguished gentlemen, Dr. Will Austin who is uh, president at Warren County Community College, and Matthew Miller, who is a veteran. They're joining us to talk about a program called the VIPER program, which stands for Veterans in Pursuit of Educational Readiness. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. How are you? Good, good. Tell us what this program is. We started this program in about fall of uh, 2012, and it was really a program designed to give veterans the most credits they could for their service. So what we do, it's a little bit different than other colleges, is Colleges will come back and they'll give veterans a certain amount of credits, usually six, some nine. We give up to 45 credits, which 45. is 45, which is three quarters of an associate's degree. And what we do is we look at all of the service. We have it looked at um, by a couple of national agencies. We do some evaluations ourselves, and we work with Thomas Edison in New Jersey. And what we try to do is come up with the maximum number of credits we can give our veterans uh, for what they've done to serve our country. Well, let's break this down a little bit. Matt, when you, when you were in service. Yes, sir. I always find it amazing when I get called sir, because <laughs> I ask my kids to when they laugh. Um, <laughs> did you say to yourself, I, I want to go back and I want to get my college degree? Was that ever part of it for you? Absolutely. I feel like not enough veterans utilize the post-9-11 GI Bill. It's a wonderful program, and I'm lucky enough to come home right to Warren County, where Warren County Community College was able to give me, I believe I transferred in with 20 credits. Yeah, 20. Which, as an infantryman, wow. that's a job skill that doesn't transfer over easily. A family friend told me about the program. The Viper program. Yes. And I decided to stop in. I came in one day, and an hour later, I was signed up for school. Uh, is that, Will, is that how it happens? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's the basic goal. What we do is we have a special office <clears throat> dedicated to our veterans for the Viper program. There's a special office dedicated to helping these men and women pursue the college careers. Absolutely. And we don't, it's not just for Warren County, it's for anyone anywhere in the world. And a lot of our servicemen and women can actually finish the degree online. We just graduated someone this past Saturday who came all the way from Virginia and <laughs> took all of their classes online, a veteran. From your school? From our school, yes. Here's what I like to tell people about the program that's really important to remember. We're not giving anything to our veterans. We're recognizing what they've already earned. So sometimes people say, oh, this is really special. You're give There's no gift. Mm. These veterans earned every single credit they get, if not more. And what we're doing is we're honoring that service by recognizing that academic credential. Because let's mm. face it, they come back a lot of times and they want to get a job. But an employer doesn't know how to translate military service. But they do know how to translate an academic degree okay. into employment. So let's do this. Let's break down, because a lot of folks are saying, hey, I would love to help you know, a veteran as well, and they're great that you're getting uh, the college uh, degree, but the credits first. But I'm sure people are asking, because I was curious about this too, how do you actually equate that military experience to college credits? Like, how does, how do they, what equals what? Well, 
every branch of the service is different and every everything that they do is different. So there's a couple of national agencies, the Joint Military Transcript, the ACE, the American Council on Education. It's all accredited Thomas organizations. Edison, all accredited. They've looked at different various uh, kind of entities in the military. So everything from basic training to specific training can be applied towards a degree. So Matt was able to actually get a degree in business. Now, you, when you think military, you wouldn't yeah. think that that would be your well, degree. What, what did he have coming in to get the 20 credits? Did, did you know what it was you had done in the military that got you the 20 credits? You, you take a lot of classes in the military. To get promoted, you have to constantly take classes. So a lot of those equated over. Like Dr. Austin said, uh, basic training transfers over. The training does as well. Why? Why the training? Well, Matt's a Marine, and we actually, myself and another person, uh, when we started the Viper, actually went to Paris Island and spent three days on the island looking at what they were doing. And I think here's Did the most. Did you mo go through the training? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do Did I look you? like I can make it through the training? <laughs> I couldn't either, so. The, what the, what we did some simulations. They we actually. Got to see. We got to shoot the guns. We got to uh, uh, jump, repel the wall. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. We got to go in hand to hand combat as, as with one of the Marine trainers. We did all the fun stuff. Matt will tell you. We got to be bit by the sand fleas a little bit, but Matt will tell you. What we do is kind of a joke compared to what, what there, obviously. There's a lot of mind stuff going on there, well, those too. Those are all the physical things. What was surprising to me was the amount of in what literally is classrooms on Paris Island, in classrooms education that these young men and women go through when they're going through basic training. It's prob We give six credits for Marine Corps Paris Island mm -hmm. training, but I can tell you based on what they go through, that's probably an underestimate by some of the national organizations. I mean, they get leadership training. They get training Absolutely. in um, how to deal with personnel issues. I mean, there is a ton of training that goes on in the military that you just don't naturally think of. You think of somebody jumping off the side of the wall, yeah. you think of somebody shooting, shooting a rifle, but you don't think about the amount of in-classroom type of training they go through. Yeah, I think through. to myself, business, uh, I've often said this to people on the air, they know I do a lot of leadership training. I'm writing a book called Lessons in Leadership, and I'm asking myself, how is it that what you're doing is not leadership? How is it that being in the Marines is not about leadership? It is. Absolutely. The Marine Corps puts a huge emphasis on small unit leadership. I believe when I was 19 years old, I was already in charge of four or five guys. You, you're not going to get that out in the civilian world. But that's why uh, a program like the Viper program, it really helps because, like Dr. Austin said, that doesn't translate well. Yeah. Where are you right now in the process academically? I uh, f just finished, got my associate's degree in business, wow. and I'm going back for the new nursing program at Warren County Community College. That's I want fabulous. to get a job with the uh, VA. Congratulations. Thank you. By the way, anyone watching anywhere in the tri-state area on public television or files, they want to find out more about it. What you do we just do? go right to the website, warren.edu, and you click right on there. the Viper button, and it's right the on Viper the front. The Viper button's right there. Yeah, absolutely. Tells you everything you need to know? Absolutely. How great has this program been? Uh, it's probably the, my favorite thing that I've ever been part of in higher Why? education. Because it's the chance to do what a community college is supposed to be doing. It's not only putting people into the classroom and going through that, but it's credentialing. It's looking at what they did in their life and their competency base and saying, this is where you are. We found you where you are, and these are the credits you've earned in life. And we look at the Viper as a way to expand everything we're doing in that area into the future. Matt, advice to some of your uh, colleagues watching right now. Use the GI Bill. It's there. Everybody wants to get out and jump right into the workforce. It's 2015, you're not going to get anywhere without an education. Mm. What's his future like? Very bright. He's going to change the VA for us. The Veterans Administration, yeah. you think a guy like him, with his leadership skills, with his educational background, with his commitment, has the ability to do and it? And his military background? Absolutely. Boy, do we need it. Uh, Dr. Will Austin, President of Warren County Community College, and uh, Matt Miller, uh, a Marine who was... Uh, had made a difference and served our country, by the way, on behalf of everyone on public television. Every time we have someone who has put his life on the line for our country, we say this, and I, I know you know we mean it. Thank you for your service to the country, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thanks that. For having us, Thanks, Steve. guys. Um, stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you very much. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. 
When injured service members start the journey home, Wounded Warrior Project is there with everything from a backpack of care items to lifetime support and caring. From the healing power of nature retreats to building healthier bodies, minds, and spirits, and even to training for today's most promising professions. If you're a wounded warrior or no one who could use help, point them in the right direction. Find WWP.org. We are honored to uh, have Danny Rodriguez, Outreach Coordinator with the Wounded Warrior Project uh, in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and also a Marine Corps veteran, served 1999-2003 in Afghanistan and Pakistan, serving our country. We thank you for your service. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. For those who do not know what the Wounded Warrior Project is, they may see spots, public service announcements on the air, um, but don't truly understand what it is. Describe it. We take a holistic approach to healing. We have 20 different programs and services under four pillars, um, primarily, primarily mind, body, economic empowerment, and engagement. Um, so we take a holistic approach to healing our uh, service members and, uh, and working with them and their family members. Returning veterans need a lot, and some of them need different things. Absolutely. Um, what is needed the most? I think support and engagement. Um, oftentimes, Give me an example of what that means. Well, so a lot of these uh, men and women, they're sort of getting forced out of the military because the, of injuries that they may have sustained while serving their country. Um, so they sort of lost that lack of, they, they have a lack of purpose, so, so to speak, when they come back here. So they don't have that, um, that service call that they did have while they were in the military. So what we try to do is get them engaged, not only with other veterans, but other organizations that will also help them sort of uh, fill that need of helping community, um, going out there and serving their community, continuing to do what they wanted, to, what they intended to do while they were in the military. How much of it is about helping that veteran physically rehab? So physical is very important, but mentally might be even more important um, than that because it, what it comes down to is they need to be comfortable with their new normal. It's never going to be the same as it was before. And what we say is, is they have to be comfortable with their new new type of normal that they'll have in their life. So that means maybe they were active in skiing and, and, uh, and snowboarding. Well, instead, and maybe they did lose a, uh, a leg or, or an arm. Well, we have adaptive ski programs to help them show them that they're still capable of doing all the things that they were doing before. They just have to change it a little bit and, uh, you know, get comfortable with their new normal. Why did you decide to get connected to the Wounded Warrior Project? Well, they sort of found me. I uh, went down uh, a little road and that uh, a lot of us do. I didn't have the support system when I got out. It was 2003, the Wounded Warrior Project and organizations like it were just getting started. Um, and uh, so I, I, I sort of lost my way a little bit and uh, did a little self-medicating um, and uh, got into a little trouble. Uh, Wounded Warrior Project found me and uh, helped me get back on to the right path. And uh, after a couple of years, I felt that I was ready to continue on and, and I wanted to give back. Wow. And I, it was sort of what was built into me. I think everybody that serves in the military has sort of a, a call of a calling to duty. Um, just because- I mean, To each you, other? To not each other, just to everyone. I mean, to, the, to, the, to this nation, um, you know, only 1% of the U.S. population serves in the military, um, and that 1% still has that, that, call, that calling of, of duty and, and esprit de corps that they want to continue, to continue to develop throughout their life. Curious about this. We've been asking people who are in leadership positions like yourself what the most important of all the leadership lessons you've learned in your, in your life so far, I mean, not, not only in the military but in this role with the Wounded Warrior Project. What would you say the most important leadership lesson that you've learned so far is? I would say Semper Gumby. Um, so Semper Gumby uh, in the Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Semper Gumby, meaning just like Gumby, you have to be flexible. Um, in, and that rings true in the Wounded Warrior Project. We have over 20 different programs, but a saying that we have inside is that every program is a pilot. 
even our programs that have been around since the conception of the Wounded Warrior Project are still considered pilots because we need to be able to adapt to our surroundings, to the changing environment of the veterans, uh, to everything, um, so that we have to be able to always be flexible. Always be flexible. Always be flexible. You have, you have a plan, you got to work that plan, but? But you might have to get there a different route than you initially intended. <sighs> What's the track program? Track programs, uh, it's one of our marquee programs, very unique to uh, any service organization out there. It's a uh, education program, um, unlike any other, where we actually relocate veterans that are interested in pursuing higher level education to uh, one of two locations at this point, Jacksonville, Florida, or San Antonio, Texas. And they'll go through a cohort, uh, with a cohort of fellow men, women, group of. Of, of service men and women that have served in combat. It's for combat veterans that maybe want to get back into that uh, education line and uh, need a little bit of help along the way. So they sort of, it's sort of a military boot camp, so to speak, of uh, education. So they get out, they have learned new uh, learning techniques, new studying habits, and they learn how to sort of progress through that education education piece of their life. You know, there are veterans watching right now. There are um, now family members of veterans, you know, who care very much about them. What advice would you have for them right now? Utilize all the resources that you have available to you. Um, if you're utilizing just one organization, you're failing yourself. There's organizations all over that deal with multitude different, uh, different aspects of your life. When a warrior project, uh, I might be a little bit biased, I feel is the best one, um, but definitely utilize all the resources that are out there for you. And finally, uh, 30 seconds left, we had your website up throughout the entire program. Those of us who want to help, we can contribute money. Absolutely, you can contribute money. You don't even need to contribute money. Just, uh, you know, cards uh, saying thank you. I mean, it, any little bit helps, and these uh, servicemen and women really do appreciate it. We say thank you to you and all of those who have served our country um, proudly and uh, bravely and uh, everything you do every day. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Hi, Steve Adubato. More importantly, I'd like to introduce uh, Admiral Joseph McGuire, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. And Joe, we've uh, had the opportunity to be here many times. In fact, here is the 24th annual Cohn Resnick Foundation Charity Golf Invitational. This is Cohn Resnick Cares. Uh, that's the foundation. The Cohn Resnick, great organization. We raise money every year in this golf outing for your foundation and also the uh, Joe Torrey, the uh, Safe at Home Foundation. Tell folks about your foundation, what it is, and, and who benefits from it. Well, uh, thank you, Steve, and I really do appreciate Cohen Resnick and all the folks who come out here and, and support the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. We started in um, April of 1980 after the failure of the Iranian hostage rescue mission. Uh, there were eight special operators who were left on the, uh, the desert uh, sand in uh, April of 1980. And the surviving men who came back from that wanted to do something to honor their sacrifice. So they started the scholarship fund. And that's when the Special Operations Warrior Foundation began. There were 17 children who uh, were the surviving children of those eight men who perished. And uh, the foundation passed the hat. And we had pretty modest means back then. Uh, but those children went to college. All 17 graduated. And since then, people have a tendency to forget that we had uh, Grenada, Panama, First Gulf War, Somalia, Yugoslavia, and for the last nearly 14 years, this war, and we've lost 940 special operators over the years, and they've left 1,067 children behind. And our solemn pledge to them is, if you lose your life in the service of your country, then the Special Operations Warrior Foundation will ensure full college benefits for your children. Now, when you die, the government does provide some benefits for the family through the VA and through, uh, through other means. But uh, what we do is we ensure full college tuition, payment, books, fees, computers for any university in the country. In addition to that, we provide tutoring for all of the children from kindergarten through senior year in, uh, in college. We have a historic 90% college graduation rate, but we like to have 100. So mm -hmm. we do provide college uh, uh, tuition even for the seniors. But we first and foremost do college, uh, scholarships for the children. 
The other thing that we do and we're very proud of is we provide immediate financial assistance for special operators who are wounded in combat, severely wounded. And uh, we've started this program in 2006, and since then we've given $2.2 million of immediate financial assistance to the wounded. Although the special operation forces comprise less than 2% of the operational forces on the battlefield, they've suffered well over 10% of the casualties. 10% 10%, over 10%. So what we try to do is, you know, just, just help them and the family get together when they're in the hospital and help them through the immediate financial crisis when somebody's severely wounded. You know, as you listen to the Admiral talk, um, those of us who've been involved in this Cohen Resnick event every year, I'm, I'm proud to host the event, not just to play in it, but host it. And uh, a large amount of money is raised uh, through the efforts of uh, Cohen Resnick. But I've got to tell you, for, for me and for a lot of the folks here, one of the most powerful things is hearing from the students, the surviving children of these very, very brave men and women uh, who've been lost. For you, Admiral, what is it like to get to know these, how many again, students are we talking about? Well, we've got 135 children in college today and over 700 uh, to send. And since we started in uh, 1980, there have been uh, 1,067 children in the foundation's care. What is it like for you to hear these young people, but to more importantly know what it is that they have sacrificed and their families have sacrificed for this country? Well, Steve, it's very personal for me. I spent 36 years in uniform and 34 years as a SEAL. And uh, many of these children were my men's children and um, uh, I You buried... call them your men? Oh, yes. They were my men. <laughs> they were my brothers. As a family? Oh, absolutely. You know, you spend 36 years in uniform. You leave your family uh, behind, and then those who you serve with actually become your family. So although I've got five brothers and sisters, um, um, my son's got godparents, or um, uh, one's a naval officer and uh, the wife of a, of a, of a mm. naval officer, because we're so close. But, um, you know, just take Operation Red Wings, which uh, was 10 years ago this month when we lost 19 special operators uh, in the Hindu Kush. Marcus Luttrell wrote a book called Lone Survivor, and a movie was made for that. And we lost 11 SEALs that day and nine, uh, uh, eight soldiers. Uh, we have 11 children from the 11 SEALs and eight children from the eight soldiers that this foundation is in the care. And uh, I buried every one of those men, and I gave the flag uh, to their widows uh, or their mothers. So when I write these checks, uh, sometimes I can write a check very quickly, and sometimes it, it takes me a while because I reminisce about the father, who he was, how he lived, not necessarily how he died, and, um, and how much the young woman has grown from when uh, she was sitting in Arlington National Cemetery next to her mother, and now she'd be uh, uh, a sophomore or junior in college, and in some cases has gone on and graduated from college. So uh, these people are, you know, I consider them to be family members every bit as much as, as my own children. And it's just an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to do this for the foundation and, and for the special operations community. Admiral, what is it that you feel the rest of us Oh, those who have given their lives to, um, I mean, I'm going to say to our country, but it's more than our country. What do we owe not just those men who have mm -hmm. given their lives, but their families, those children. Well, Steve, I, I think that the American people are very appreciative of, um, of people in uniform and veterans right now. I mean, all the time that I was in uniform, people didn't stop and say, thank you for your service. This is only something that has recently come about. And I think it's because we have less than 1% of the American people carrying the load for the war for the mm -hmm. last 14 years. But, you know, Americans stop people in uniform and say, thank you very much for your service. When I go through TSA, and I show my identification mm -hmm. card, the TSA agent always says, thank you for your service, Admiral. We give standing ovations at ballparks. Uh, we allow the active duty uh, military to board the aircraft first. But if we really want to be thankful for their service, if we really want to be able to do something, then we need to put a little bit of skin in the game. And when a special operator or any service member loses their life in the service of their country, I think all of us should remember that no child in this great nation should be financially disadvantaged because his or her mother died in the line of duty in the service of the country. So with this college foundation, it's a way for all of us to chip in and send them to college. I'd like to make something perfectly clear. The foundation supports college scholarships. We support tutoring. We give immediate financial assistance to the wounded. We, do the, we provide the counseling. But we would not be able to do any of that 
without the generosity of American citizens. Although I write the check, it is the donors, the people here today at Cohen Resnick and Cohen Resnick Foundation, they're the ones who make the scholarships possible, and they're the ones who provide immediate financial assistance to the wounded, not me. One more question. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you a question about leadership, uh, an issue we ask uh, very special leaders about. Um, what would you say the most significant leadership lesson you have learned in your many years in the Navy and, and the very, I was, I was, I was going to say difficult, but extraordinarily hard to imagine situations you have faced as a SEAL. Number one leadership lesson you learned is? Listen. Listen. Not all got a good ideas come from the top. And uh, as far as being in special operations and being a SEAL, you know, everybody who goes out on the mission gets a say. And everybody on the mission could win the Medal of Honor, and everybody on the mission could die. So I always used to say, as far as the SEAL team was concerned, it was an employee-owned company. Everybody has a stake in this. So when the stakes are high, you know, the, the senior man actually has to make the decision. But it really is prudent and smart to listen to absolutely everybody, even those folks who don't have that much expertise, because a lot of times people come and they bring no prejudice to it. And you've been doing things for years one way, and somebody may just come in and ask why, and sometimes that why is a very good question that may, ask, uh, may make you just uh, think about what you're doing and why and improve uh, your processes. Admiral, I want to uh, thank you not only for this interview, but more importantly for the, all the years of service uh, to our country. Um, thank you very much. Steve, thank you very much. It was an honor and a pleasure to serve with those folks and serve the American people. Thank you. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, JFK Medical Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, United Airlines, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, and by ADP. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hello, I'm Mario Schlosser, CEO of Oscar Health. The Affordable Care Act was passed to increase the quality and the affordability of health insurance. All Americans now have access to health insurance regardless of income and must by law have proof of coverage or incur a tax penalty. So please be sure to sign up during this year's open enrollments. Visit www.healthcare.gov and find a plan that's working just right for you.